As someone who grew up watching an obscene amount of movies and TV shows, there are several that have always stuck with me. One of those being Guillermo del Toro's 2006 fantasy drama, Pan's Labyrinth, and today we'll be focusing on one character in particular. Now anyone who has seen any of del Toro's movies will know that they are filled with unique and strange looking creatures that are quite often terrifying, and this is certainly the case for Pan's Labyrinth. In fact, looking back at it now, the movie itself has some quite dark and underlying themes that aren't exactly suitable for children. The creature that we'll be covering in today's video is the Pale Man, a creature that myself and I'm sure many others can attribute quite a few sleepless nights to. The Pale Man is an ancient child devouring demon-like creature that our protagonist Ophelia encounters during her quest. She is sent to retrieve a dagger from the Pale Man's lair, but before she embarks on her journey she is warned by the fawn and fairies assisting her that the monster she will encounter devours children. Ophelia, still determined to complete her quest, travels to the creature's lair, and we first encounter him sitting motionless at his dining table. As his name would suggest, his skin was extremely pale and wrinkled, with an elastic quality. He appeared as a rather grotesque humanoid monster, with long black claws, two nostrils where you'd expect his nose to be, and no sockets for his eyes, as they would instead be placed into the palm of his hand. Looking around it becomes very apparent that Ophelia is not the first child to stumble upon the Pale Man's lair, as we see piles of children's shoes almost being kept as trophies. This may also indicate that the monster eats its victims entirely, as we see no bones or human remains left. There are numerous paintings on the walls and the ceilings showing the demon devouring children. These children are very clearly pleading and begging for mercy, which shows us that the Pale Man may have no trace of humanity left. We don't actually know a great deal about the Pale Man's abilities and powers, but he does appear to be extremely old, being able to enter a deep slumber for hundreds of years if not more, until he is awoken by his next victim. We can then assume that along with his great strength, he may also possess immortality. There are a couple of things that allude to the Pale Man being capable of magic or sorcery. Despite being in a deep slumber, the food on his table appears to show no sign of rot and decay. Now this could be some kind of spell or enchantment designed to trick the children and enter his lair, if we take a look at his lair itself, there is no entrance or exit, so he must have some way of luring children into his lair in the first place. Not wanting to stick around much longer, Ophelia lets out her fairy companions who assist her in finding the dagger. But as Ophelia is about to leave, she falls victim to the temptation of the banquet before her. Despite being adamantly warned by the fairies, she ignores them, picking up and eating a grape. This appeared to immediately break the pale man's slumber, as we see him place an eye in each one of his palms in quite a disturbing and terrifying scene. Ophelia, still occupied by the food, fails to notice that the Pale Man has awoken, and when she eventually does, the fairies attempt to distract him, with two of them being mercilessly devoured. Using the fairies' distraction, she races back to the entrance that she created, being closely pursued by the Pale Man, who in this moment shows us that his mobility may in fact be his only weakness, resembling a decrepit old man when chasing Ophelia through the hallways. Seeing the entrance that she previously created disappeared due to her taking too long, Ophelia takes a piece of chalk and is able to draw a new exit just above her, outside of the reach of the Pale Man, and she is able to barely escape. When he was asked about the influences of the Pale Man, de Toro does mention the painting by Francisco Goya of Saturn or Cronus devouring his own children to be quite an inspiration, and if we take a look at the paintings on the walls and the ceilings of the Pale Man's lair, they are quite reminiscent of Goya's work. The Pale Man's mythological influences do stretch beyond Greek and Roman myth, all the way to Japan, and the yokai known as the Tenome, an elderly looking man with no face and an eyeball in each palm. The Tenome's diet is also quite similar to the Pale Man, consisting of human bones fresh from the body. The Pale Man is a great example of Del Toro's ability to create visually striking creatures and monsters that are so terrifying because they rarely resemble anything we've seen before. If you've never seen Pan's Labyrinth before, then I highly recommend that you do. And if you have any thoughts on the Pale Man or Pan's Labyrinth in general, then feel free to share them with me in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.